Senator Santorum became one of the most successful government reformers in our history, taking on Washington's powerful special interests from the moment he arrived in the nation's capital. Along with John Boehner and Jim Nussel, Senator Santorum was a member of the famous Gang of Seven that exposed the Congressional Banking and Congressional Post Office scandal. Yeah. Yeah. It was this record of reform that prompted a Washington Post reporter to write in a recent article that Santorum was a Tea Party kind of guy before there was a Tea Party. Yeah. Rick Santorum. Thank you very much, Gary. I appreciate it. It's, uh, it's great to be here in Southern California. Thank you so much, Jordan, Gary, for, uh, for the invitation. Um, thank you for being here. I know, uh, you know those of us from, uh, from outside of California look with a, a great deal of sympathy toward conservatives here. In yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, are, you are a hearty lot. Uh, that I know there's not get a lot of encouragement and uh, so one of the things I wanted to do and, and coming out here for tomorrow night's debate uh, was to get out and talk to a group of conservatives and encourage you uh, that uh, the work that, that you're doing here uh, while I know it is frustrating uh, there is a, there is a battle ahead guys uh, this is an historic election uh, this will be an election that will be the most important election in your lifetime uh, I think it'll be the most important election since that election uh, that was just referred to and uh, prior that Abraham Lincoln was elected in 1860. In that election, we were deciding whether these United States, if you look at the history, uh, our government was referred to more often as these United States than the United States. Uh, whether these United States would be the United States. That's what that election was referred to. This election is about whether the heart and soul of America, the why of America, is going to be maintained, or whether we are going to go off in a completely different vision than the Founder's vision of this country, and what made this country the greatest country in the history of the world. That's why when I announced for President back in uh, June of this year, I announced the little town of Somerset, Pennsylvania. Yay. <laughs> yeah, one for two people. Know Noel Lanya, I spent a, I spent a week there one day. Uh, and I, a reason I announced it that, uh, interestingly enough, on on this week, it is five miles from Shanksville, Pennsylvania, which is the site of, as you know, where Flight 93 went down. And it was the first blow for freedom. Those who fought the tyranny of that day ordinary American struck a blow for freedom in that abandoned coal mine field, that strip mine field in Somerset, Pennsylvania. About 20 miles north of there, they don't have strip mines, they have deep mines, all coal mines. And in 1927, my grandfather came from Italy to those coal fields in northern Somerset County. And he came because uh, he had just fought in World War I and was now living in northern Italy and actually had a very good job working on the mail train. And life was actually pretty good for him. His family, he had three, two children, uh, three, I guess by 1927, three children. And he decided to leave Italy, leave his family, leave a, one of the most beautiful little towns I've ever visited up in the Tyrolean northern part of Italy. And he came to the coal fields of western Pennsylvania. And I would ask him growing up as a kid why he would go and work in these coal fields, and he did until he was 72 years old. He mined coal in the deep mines for 30 years. And I would ask him why he did that, why he left this beautiful little town and all of his family. And he would always answer with the same one word answer, freedom. He valued freedom more than anything else. He didn't want his children to grow up in Mussolini's Italy where the state was going to tell him what to do and how to do it. His children were at that time marching in little, with brown shirts that Mussolini's youth corps, 
And he said, that is not what I want for my children. And so he went to this little company town, and as I said, mined coal, and dug his way for freedom for me. So Somerset County represented not just the freedom of those who fought in this most recent war, but what my ancestors fought, and what your ancestors collectively fought for for our country, but individually fought for, is to leave this country better than they found it. This country is a truly exceptional country. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a president who does not believe when the President of the United States was asked, do you believe in American exceptionalism? His response was, I believe in American exceptionalism, like the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism, and the Brits believe in British exceptionalism. President Obama, you do not understand America, if you can answer a question. That's right. America is different than any other country in the history of the world. I know we have some tea parties here, and I'm glad you're here. I am so glad for the energy and enthusiasm. Yes. That you brought to the there would be no doubt that we wouldn't have the majority in the House. We wouldn't have picked up the seats in the Senate had it not been for the valiant effort of many folks in the Tea Party movement across this country. But let me just say to those Tea Partiers who are very much focused on the Constitution, you hear a lot of debate in conservative circles now about the Constitution, the Constitution. The Constitution is a great document. But the Constitution is not the heart and soul of America. It is the operator's man of America. It is the how of America. It is not the why. The why of America is in that other document, that four score and seven years ago document, the Declaration of Independence. That is the soul of America that Lincoln referred to in the opening lines of that address. And he referred to the phrase that we all know before, as the previous speaker said, before they taught us different things in school like they do now. But the line of the Declaration was, was something that every child had to memorize. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is the soul of America. When you hear about American exceptionalism, that is what they're talking about. Why is that exceptional? Because prior to that moment in history, July of 1776, no other country had ever established itself with the idea that rights came from God to each and every person. No country had even conceived 